Hello, hello. Today we're going to be making a circular habit tracker. So there are quite a few habit trackers out there. So we're just going to be using these ones as a kind of rough reference. But this is just kind of like the theme of what I want to make. So to get started, first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our toolbar. This is Illustrator's basic toolbar. It's often the one it defaults to depending on the workspace you're using. So we're going to go edit toolbar down here, these three dots. Turn on my mouse tracker for you guys. So edit toolbar down here and then we're going to click this hamburger menu up here and change it to advanced. So as you can see this has changed our toolbar massively and now the line segment tool which is normally hiding behind the rectangle tool has its own place. We're going to hold that down or you can right click it and then we're going to get the polar grid tool. This is what's going to form the base of our habit tracker. So I'm just going to click and it's going to bring up this dialog box. The concentric dividers are these circle dividers that go around the whole habit tracker. And then the radial dividers are these spokes that come out from the center. So I'm doing 41 radial dividers because I'm going to remove 10 of them to leave 31 days. But you can choose however many you want depending on the shape. 41 is going to give us more of this kind of quarter look but you can do much less um, or much more depending on how you want it to look. Some of them don't even have any removed, they're just the whole uh, polar grid. So you can also do that if you want. So I'm just gonna click OK here. And then um, in my properties panel, if you don't have this, just go window and then properties is going to be down here. This is sorted in alphabetical order so it makes things really easy to find. So under this align panel, I'm just going to center it horizontally and vertically. And then I'm going to hit V to go back to my move tool. I'm going to hold option or alt if you're on windows and shift and then just enlarge it. This is just so I can see things a bit better. Then I'm going to rotate it so that this line here is roughly 90 degrees. And if you want to be certain, you can go Command or Control R to show your rulers. You can bring in a guide and then that will help you be sure that it's exactly 90 degrees. But I don't really need mine to be exactly. Then I'm going to ungroup it, which is Control Shift G, or you can choose ungroup here. And I'm going to do that a couple times. So now what we've got is everything has been separated. This is going to be really helpful for us. I'm just going to delete this guide now and then I'm going to take this and this one this is going to be our gap of 10 and I'm just going to expand these past the borders of the grid and I'm actually just going to show you why so if I select the whole thing we're going to be using the shape builder tool which is shift M and if we hold alt for minus you can see that the red line is going around halfway and I don't really want that. I want it to be stopped where I want to minus uh, my gap. So if we go back to the move tool, which is V, select that. And then I'm going to hit A, which is our object selection tool. I'm going to select the anchor point and then I'm going to click and drag it. You see this little magenta on right there. That means that line extension is on and it's not moving the line. It's just extending it. So if you don't see that, you might just have moved the whole line out like that. So this one, we will do the same thing. Click this, make sure it says on there, which it does. And now when we click and drag to select all of it and go shift M, we can see that the line is stopped by that barrier that we've made with these. So with the shape builder tool you see there's a little plus here next to your cursor if you hold down alt or option it's going to turn to a minus and that's what we want so holding alt or option you can just click and drag and you'll see this line that's being drawn this is just where i'm minusing everything so if we let go we'll see that it's just deleted all of those so you can just keep going with that and i also want 
these two inner circles here to be deleted. So holding Alt, we just go around. And there we go. I also want to delete these, so I'm going to hold Alt and click once. And then that's going to get rid of them for me. So this is what we're left with. This is now the base of our polar grid. And in our layers panel, I'm just going to name this polar grid. We can, if you don't have a layers panel, just go window and then layers here. I want to have a place where people can label their habits that they're tracking. So in the same layer, I'm just going to hit P for the pen tool. You can also use the line segment tool if you want. And I'm just going to click here, hold shift to keep it perfectly straight. And then I'm going to hit escape to end my path. So hold shift and escape. So if you've ended your path and it's like here and you hit escape, it's probably not going to do anything. You got to move it away before you can hit escape. This one, oh, I know why that's doing that. Uh, if it's doing that, it's just because it's attached itself. These ones aren't attached. Uh, as you can see, they're their own separate ones. But this one, because the path is ending there. Um, so you see that little line next to it as opposed to this like star. So we don't want that. I'm just going to move it a little bit away. Hold shift to keep it straight. Escape. And then we'll hit A. Hold shift to keep it straight. Oops. Don't know why that came up. And I dragged it out too far. So you can see I moved it. I didn't do the it properly. So select it first and then make sure the on is on. And then my lovely smart guides will tell me that it's correct. So there we are. This is how we've got our base of the grid set up. And then we want to add numbers to it. So I'm going to show you three different methods, all ranging not in difficulty, but more in the time that they'll take. So first things first, I am going to select this outer ring and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to create a new layer by clicking this plus down here. And I'm going to call this um, whole path numbers. This will be make sense once I've shown you all the methods. So I'm just going to lock this bottom layer. And then on this one, I'm going to paste in place, which is Control, Shift, and V. So we're just going to hide that one so that we can see things a little clearer. And now I'm going to use the scissors tool. And the shortcut for this is C, which I like to remember is C for cut, because we're going to cut our path. So I'm just going to click this anchor point here and here. And then you'll see I can just delete this whole path. And it's just left us with this lovely outer ring. So to put numbers on this, we're going to use the type on a path tool. We're going to hold down or right click the type tool and then we're going to click type on a path and then we're just going to click here and it's going to fill with lorem ipsum but we'll just delete that. Then I'm going to type in my numbers. There we go. So these are all of our numbers. You can choose, you know, the font you want. Um, you can choose what, um, anything you want. I don't want these to be so close to the edge of my habit tracker. If we show this one, we can see that they're like touching it. We don't really want that. So I'm going to highlight them. And then in the properties panel, in the character panel and click these three dots. And then baseline shift, I'm just going to increase that. And that will just remove it away from there. And now I'm going to do this the very low tech way. This feels wrong as a graphic designer, but this is the fastest way of doing this. And we're just going to 
increase the space. Should have done the one first. And so there are our numbers. You might want to tweak some of the things to make sure that they're looking exactly right. But that's our first method. So that's the whole path that we're doing there. So I'm just going to lock that one and hide it. And then I'm going to create a new layer. And once again, we're going to paste in place Control Shift V. Because we've still got our border in our pasteboard. So hiding that one, I'm just going to cut it again. C for cut. And then I'm going to show the polar grid layer, select this, and I'm once again going to cut. So I'm just going to do it where the lines intersect and I'm going to cut around the whole border. If you want to be more precise about this, you can go Control or Command Y. This will put us in outline mode and you can very easily see where all the paths actually end because the strokes aren't visible to make it hard to see. And so now what we have is all of our paths will be separate. So I'm going to click Command Y to go back into our regular view. And now I'm just going to hide this one. So for this one, we're once again, it's same as before, type on a path, hold down the type tool, select type on a path tool, and then we'll select there and let's just put one. If I hit A, we can see the edges. Uh, sometimes this won't be perfectly to the edge. So like this one isn't quite. So we're just going to move that to be perfectly to the very edge. And then we're going to center our text. This is going to be a really great time to use paragraph styles so that when you change the paragraph style, all of the numbers change. So same here again. Hold down that, type on a path tool, select. This one's going to be two. Select our direct selection tool to make sure that this is right to the end. And then you're just going to have your numbers be perfectly centered. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of them. One thing is if you see this little square icon come up and you click that and it's going to load. This is called the load fun in Adobe. Um, this isn't what you want. Just undo that and make sure you have this little arrow icon showing when you're adjusting those poles. If you wanted to be really clever as well, um, for more advanced users of um, Illustrator, you could set these up to be linked text boxes so that you don't have to do this. But to be honest, the amount of time it would take to link all of these text boxes and then type all of your numbers, and then you still have to adjust the polls and everything, it's probably not worth it. And there we are. All of these are individual paths. So if we go on Y, we can see the paths, but when we're using type on a path, they go invisible, which is really helpful for us. So we're going to call this split path type on a path. So with 
layers. I like to name my layers, something that I'll definitely recognize in the future. Um, typically I work with something I call the messy bedroom approach, which is like, I can find everything, but no one else can. Um, I don't really recommend working that way because future you is going to not be able to find things. And if anyone else is working on your files, you would be embarrassed to let someone into your messy bedroom, right? So with this, I just like to keep things neat and organized. So the third method, I'm not going to do the whole way through just because it's going to take a while but it's the rotate method so what we're going to do is we're going to create a text box i'm going to do 31 just because this is going to be rotated a number of times this is about as precise as type on a path um but i don't love it so i'm just going to center this in my artboard and that's about the distance i want it away and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit P for my pen tool and I'm going to create an anchor point. So I'm just going to hit escape and we're left with a stray point. Stray points are typically bad in Illustrator, but this is going to really help us. So I'm going to center that on my artboard and then I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to group these two together. So then I'm going to get my rotate tool and I'm just going to click on the anchor point. So that's taken this teal marker and that's made this our anchor point so to rotate it just drag it and it's going to rotate around that point don't switch to the move tool because it will lose that point so if we go to the move tool and then we go back to the rotate tool oh but that one I kept it sometimes it loses it it really depends I have always had it lose it but I did recently update it so maybe it was a bug I don't know so now we're just going to go command C or control C to copy and then control shift V to paste in place. And then we're just going to drag that around. So control shift V, paste in place. We can just copy them and then we can individually rotate them all around. So this way you have your object um, they all have their own pivot point. You can center them yourself. Um, you'll have a little bit more control than if you're doing like regular type on a path, but because you're typing in all of your text boxes individually, once again, it's just going to make things a little bit more difficult because you're going to have to edit them one by one to change your numbers. So as we can see here, this one isn't quite, oops, go back to the rotate tool and you'll see that this pivot has reset so we'll click the anchor point again and then once you're done with this um, I'll just select everything on this layer you can do that by clicking here we're going to ungroup everything Control shift G and then you can select your anchor points in the middle and delete them or you can go select object and then stray points, and that'll select any that are on your artboard. So there you go. That's the method of how to create the habit tracker, and then three different methods on how to create the numbers. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I release new videos every Tuesday and Friday.